Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in our Let's Play series. And today I'm back here in that area I deleted the chunks uh, to generate new 1.17 terrain. And as you can see we have some stone pillars and this uh, scaffolding pillar here. Yeah, the scaffolding pillar is where we're gonna build the, uh, our copper farm. I actually already have the schematic loaded here. As you can see, yeah, it's the uh, design I made uh, a showcase video for, right? So we're gonna rebuild it here. And the, uh, all these stone pillars, we have five stone pillars. Uh, they are geodes that I found. And uh, as you can see, we have beacons here because I already uh, dug out a little bit around the uh, geodes. Yeah, so as you can see here, for example, uh, we dug uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, box here around the geodes because we're gonna make some farms uh, in all these geodes. And at first I was gonna do an automatic farm using pistons and stuff because uh, while we are gonna be farming copper here, uh, the farmers would be automatically uh, collecting uh, geodes for our amethyst for us, right? But it's much better to just come here and mine it manually, right? But yeah, it's much better to just come here and manually mine the geodes because we can use the uh, PKX of the Fortune and I made one without efficiency uh, because it's uh, less chance for us to break the uh, budding amethyst by accident, right? But the way we are gonna farm here, uh, you might have noticed uh, we have a conduit out there. Uh, because the way we are gonna mine it, it's actually by uh, placing uh, water everywhere in these geodes here. Okay, so as you can see here, we uh, waterlogged all the amethyst here. And now it's much easier for us to go around and collect uh, the amethyst shards. And I guess we could actually use the one with the efficiency now. Because we mine slower while we are swimming, right? And yeah, that's the way uh, we're gonna get all these amethyst shards. But yeah, uh, this one looks like it's too far from uh, the conduit. But I guess I have a lot of conduits so I can make it a two or maybe if we even need three conduits around this area, right? But yeah, the idea now is to do uh, this waterlogged stuff in all these five geodes and then I uh, will build the copper farm. So yeah, let's go for a time lapse of me building the copper farm. Okay, so as you saw, we finished the building uh, the farm here in the time lapse. Uh, let me uh, show you guys how the farm looks uh, on the inside here, right? On the spawning of the farms. Yeah, so let me take a nice vision portion here. And as you can see, we have some cats and uh, dogs here to scare the skeletons and uh, creepers uh, to this place here where they will uh, despawn. And the zombies will get attracted by uh, these turtle eggs here and they will uh, step on this pressure plate that will drop uh, hopping flash for them and if they hold the hopping flash they won't despawn and uh, will go down to the next uh, level, right? Or uh, to the water strings. Yeah, they will go to the water strings and they, they will go up this uh, water elevator and we'll go uh, here where we can kill them. And the only thing I did different from my uh, showcase video is uh, instead of using barrels in some place there, I use the uh, hoppers, right? Because uh, then you need less hopping flash to fill that, that up, right? Because I didn't have uh, too much hopping flash, because mostly I uh, trade with villagers or just uh, throwing lava, right? And yeah, here we have, uh, and also 
Another thing that's different here, I have three filters and three double chests, right? Because I noticed in my tests that the, uh, it was a little bit uh, too slow with only one filter. But yeah, whenever we get Pop and Clash here, it gets filtered and it uh, gets thrown down that uh, those water things there. And actually I forgot to put the filters here. So I will go uh, put the filters here. And also I will go turn off the mob switch so we can test the farm. Okay, so I set up the filters and turned off the mob switch. And you can already see some zombies getting here. And I totally forgot to get my sword here. Yeah, I probably needed to make another uh, smite sword, right? To leave it here. I will do that later. But yeah, I can already hear the zombies converting, and we should start getting our first zombies or ground dropping here. And we already got a copper in got in the first draw. Yeah, this farm is already a success, right? <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, it takes a while to warm up, but now we are getting a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, rounds here, right? Okay, so I have been using the farm for 5 minutes right now, so let's check. We get 24, 10, and 10 more, so 44 ingots in 5 minutes. Yeah, that would be uh, a little bit more than 500 per hour, so yeah, it's around the 500, 520 per hour, I guess, uh, which is pretty good, right? But yeah, another reason why I chose this place is because you can see we have some mountain biomes here, and also a tiger biome, and I did want to make a, a snow powder farm here, right? Because it does snow in the tiger if you, you are high enough, and also in the mountains. But let's go back uh, to spawn because I want to show you guys something there. Okay, so we are here at the spawn chunks, uh, at the uh, shulker farm, and as you can see, here is also a tiger biome. And uh, because this farm is way high, it's in Y150, we are getting snow uh, in this last uh, platform here, right? And also, I think we, we also get that in the iron farm here and I'm not sure if it gets snow even if we are not if the player is not here, right? but I wanna test it and I wanna place some cauldrons here so I have some iron here in the iron farm and I will craft some cauldrons so yeah, let me do that and I will come back with you guys later and another advantage of this kind of uh, copper farm that we have here is that as you can see I'm flying back from spawn and when we come back here the drones are still here because uh, yeah they don't despawn right because they are holding items so yeah we can go back to anywhere and uh, we still gonna have a bunch of drones here when we come back right okay we are back here in the end and the next farm we need to do uh, is using this uh, point of dripstone so I think I will uh, build a farm in, in here, right? Around the ring here, like these other farms. And I think it's probably gonna be like a big rectangle uh, with dripped stone, and uh, I think it's water on top that we need it to grow, right? And then I will build a flying machine to uh, collect the or to break the drip stone, right? So let's go for another time lapse of me building that farm. Okay, so as you saw in the time lapse, I kind of started building uh, the dripstone farm here. And I say started because you can see we are not even halfway, right? Uh, because I don't have enough dripstone to build it. <laughs> and I'm not completely sure that we need the, uh, the dripstone block itself on top of the pointed dripstone. And uh, water, of course, right? 
uh, so it grows but I read in the week that it needs to be uh, the dripstone block itself so I think it is correct, right? And also I think I built it one block higher than I should have because I think the, uh, the small ones uh, won't grow uh, uh, on the bottom here uh, un until they are in the second block there, right? And yeah to collect it, uh, right now we don't have it too much because I, I just collected it uh, uh, not long ago. And yeah, uh, to collect it I made this flying machine here. Uh, so we have one uh, right on the bottom here, that's why I'm using uh, Crying Obsidian so it doesn't stick to the slime. And on top we have one like one block below uh, where we have our uh, seed grip stones, let's say, right? So yeah, if I press this button here, uh, the flying machines uh, start uh, working and breaking uh, the dripstone, right? Uh, like I said, we, right now we don't have any on the floor, but if we had, we uh, would break, right? And yeah, so far I'm just uh, getting some scaffolding here and replacing uh, some uh, dripstone here to expand the farm. Yeah, so as you can see here for the uh, with the change borders, this is uh, 20 blocks wide and it's a full chunk here, another one here and uh, 8 blocks more here so it's uh, 20 by 40, right? But yeah, there is another thing that I built uh, here in the end and it's actually back here uh, on the back of the uh, farm you can kind of see a little bit but I'm gonna show you guys a time lapse of me building it and then we talk about it. Yeah, that's right. I present to you the Happy Tomato. <laughs> And this is actually a map, so we can carry the happy tomato in our hand here forever, right? And this is actually a funny story that I was watching uh, Mrs. Hot Cheesy uh, live stream, and she does emotes for a lot of uh, other streamers, and she was trying to do emotes of a, a Hulk, right, from uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? Uh, to a, a streamer called Marvel Man, and yeah, this is the result. <laughs> yeah, we kind of uh, have a laugh on her stream because the uh, she tried to make the uh, whole car here and it end up look like in a tomato. <laughs> and yeah, it was a, a really funny stream, and it became kind of a meme. So I decided to make the map here. Right now we have the the happy tomato forever uh, in our uh, world here and if you guys remember a long time ago when I showed my uh, book with projects I did have a project to make a map area and I guess since we already did this map here uh, we should use this part here I think this is uh, north yeah this is north of the uh, the main island there or where the main island was one day <laughs> so yeah I guess this will be our uh, map area now <laughs> and this actually reminded me of something that we can actually do a map of our uh, base here in the end right so let's try to uh, make a map here in the center okay so I guess we we can do a 9 by or a 3 by 3 map right so let me try to do these maps Okay, so I finished uh, making the map here, and we can see our beacons, uh, our farm is here, right, and in the center here, our storage, right, kind of looks cool. Uh, maybe except for this farm here, that is that uh, melon farm there, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, because it's kind of in a weird position, but whatever, right? And uh, also, uh, you can see here that we have a whole bunch of shulkers uh, with new items, right? Uh, because we don't uh, 
uh, sort these new items yet in our uh, storage here and I'm actually gonna do another uh, storage yeah I know this is already the third storage and I'm gonna do a fourth one in this world right uh, but that's gonna be for next episode because I'm probably gonna dedicate a whole episode to the storage right and yeah speaking of storage we already have a five uh, shulker boxes full of shulker shells here and this other one and there is also a bunch of shulker shells uh, still in the farm right so yeah we have probably more than enough shulker shells that we ever gonna need already but yeah now i want to go back to the copper farm and check if we got any snow powder right oh and by the way i did a portal here to the copper farm it's pretty close to spawn so yeah, the tunnel here is not actually a tunnel, right? Yeah, okay, we are uh, here in the copper farm, and right now the uh, mob switch uh, is turned off, right? And I, I'm not even gonna go uh, back to spawn to show you guys the cauldrons, because they didn't get any powder snow. And as you can see here, uh, because of the quantity of copper I have here, I did spend a lot of time here. And... Uh, it definitely rained in, uh, while I was here, I did saw a bunch of rain and we got nothing on the on the cauldrons at spawn, right? So I did the smart thing and I tested in a, a world, a creative world with the same seed, right? And I actually found out that there is some kind of radius that the player has to be from uh, the cauldron so it uh, actually gets powder snow, right? And if you press F3 and G here, it's kind of based on the chunks, but yeah, it's a little bit weird, uh, because it's not a square, it's a kind of weird, like if it was a square, this uh, chunk being uh, loaded it would also mean this one is, right? And it's a similar thing with the Amethyst Geodes, that's why I built the farm there, right? Otherwise, I would have built the farm closer to uh, the mountain biomes here because we have a whole bunch of mountain uh, biome this side here that doesn't actually uh, get any powder snow. And yeah, right now we don't have any powder snow in any of these cauldrons uh, because uh, it didn't rain yet uh, after I placed them here. And you can see that all these cauldrons are in biomes that snow, like mountains. Uh, stone shore, there's some over there in taiga biome, here you can see that we already have a beach biome, so this biome uh, won't form, well there's no, right, it will form water if it starts raining, and yeah, here, oh actually here we also have the uh, mountain biomes, right, there is a taiga there, but it's out of the, the range where I, uh, I stay at the copper farm, right, it's too far away, and yeah, same thing, it's a weird uh, shape here because uh, of the biomes and uh, because of the chunk borders here. Yeah, and I also spent a lot of time in mining the amethyst here. And I think we have about 13 shulker boxes so far, but yeah, I need to mine more. As you can see, they already grew, right? And yeah, sometimes there is uh, fish, glow squid, axolotls here, right? And I forgot to say when I showed this a, a few minutes ago that I saw this in a video by a Brazilian YouTuber named Vinicius Treze. Uh, if you are Brazilian and you play Minecraft, you'll know him because he's like the most popular survival Minecraft YouTuber in Brazil. So yeah, but um, most of my audience is uh, from other countries, right? Because I, I do videos in English. But yeah. So you might not know him, but it, uh, that's where I I stole this idea from, right? <laughs> but yeah, guys, I know this episode was too much technical stuff, right? A bunch of farms again, because yeah, last episode we did the choker farm and other farms, and now we did more farms, right? But yeah, like I said, the next episode will also be technical stuff, uh, mostly focused on storage. So I hope you guys liked this episode, and I see you guys in the next one. Bye!
Happy tomato time, happy tomato time, happy tomato time.